Okay, we're back here inside theCUBE. theCUBE is a SiliconANGLE's flagship program where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. We are at EMC World in Las Vegas for three days. This is day one, wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We'll be broadcasting all day. Turn to siliconangle.com and wikibon.org for the free research and free content. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante from wikibon.org. Lloyd Carney is here. He's the CEO of Brocade, relatively new CEO of Brocade, former CEO of some other companies. Lloyd, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, great to be here. Yeah, it's good to see you. This is uh, obviously a big show for EMC. You guys have been partners with EMC for quite a long time now. Uh, industry's transforming. Um, so, let's start with, with you. I mean, you're at the company for nearly 100 days. What'd you learn the first hundred days? Any surprises, any you know, pleasant, unpleasant surprises, and how are you applying that going forward? Yeah. So yeah, it's a great opportunity for us to be here at, at VM, at, um, at this opportunity. I almost said yeah. VMworld. Yeah, so I'm know, almost like, hard to like differentiate mind melting sometimes, these right? two guys <laughs> at, at EMC World. <laughs> but um, they're the largest investment we make for a show. If you look at the investment we make in people, in, in floor space, in activity, and it's, it's reflective of the fact that you know, we've been 15 years now with, with EMC, and we've shipped 8 million ports, 50,000 joint customers, so they are a significant player with us, and um, uh, and we look at them more as a customer than as a partner. I mean, a significant part of my revenue comes from- How many from years of the Brocade part? 15 years? 15 years, 15 years of um, tight relationship, um, solid relationship between, at every level of the organization. So, um, we're excited to be here, um, expecting to have this relationship only get better over time. To the point of your question of you know what are the things I, I learned, one of the, the good things I learned was the, the strength of our partnerships. I mean, every partner we have, every major partner we have that we have met with wants to see us succeed. Um, they have a vested interest in seeing us succeed because the, the choice that they have is not a very pleasant choice. If you think about what the competitive landscape looks like, you know, it's important for them to have someone besides the big C as a partner because the big C has a broad range of interests. We're pretty focused. We do fiber channel connectivity, we do IP connectivity storage. We're not doing video monitoring. We're not doing you know laptops. We're not doing servers. We're not getting into the storage business. We're pretty focused on what we do. And so our partners like the fact that you know we know they know exactly where we play, exa exactly what our limitations are, and how we complement them. So the the number one most um, surprising for me was just how strong those relations were. I could I could. Guarantee you that we have stronger partnerships today with all our major partners, EMC being included, and we even see one of our signal, most significant partners than we did a year ago, without a doubt. So that's one of the positives. I think one of the disappointing things to me is just how few people understand the, the strength of our IP offering. We have an IP Ethernet fabric offering that is every bit as good as our SAN offering. The, the benefits that we bring to scale out NAS, to SSDs, we're using our IP connectivity is is on parallel. No one even comes close. Uh, and so if I go, you know, one to ten, you know, I'm an eleven with how great my partnerships are with people like EMC. And I'm at like a negative one on, on people realizing this great IP infrastructure we have and the value that it can bring. So talk about so, the announcements you guys had. Let's just get the news out of the way. Mm -hmm. So I just got so someone cut the wire. I think it either I think it went out. The um, S the Viper so how software defined storage for fiber channel right. SANS. Is that out? Or is that, that a, I went, I went out this That went morning. out, okay, yep. just but give a quick uh, Viper yep. software defined. What is the so, key there? So the key there, and it's a very significant strategic move on the part of EMC, their Viper capability enables them to provide a, a software defined network into the, the SAN infrastructure in a heterogeneous environment. So you can now connect using a software upgrade from EMC and now have you know SDN kind of leverage into non EMC environments. So for the people out there who have EMC storage, who have, have storage from Hitachi, um, you know, NetApp, whoever the L, the else they're connected to, they now have the ability using EMC to get full visibility to that infrastructure. And they utilize our, our um, um, brocade uh, network analysis tools to provide them information there too. So they now instantly have access. There are 50,000 joint brocade customers who now have access broken EMC customer now have access to this tool with just a software upgrade. So it's a brilliant move on the EMC side. I like the name of it, Viper. It really is one of those little hidden things <laughs> in the grass that... I think of the car, the red dice. sports car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, really yeah I was more the snake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 they now have to provide own, leverage. You know? Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> now, Lloyd, I have to ask you, so the, the, the Ethernet world and the fiber channel worlds are still in this whole software-defined discussion, still mm. seem quite separate. Is there a bridge in the future to bring those together? Is that something that you're working on and can envision? Well, you know, I think the, the bridge comes from people who are doing NAS, realizing that, you know, a scale-out NAS looks a lot like a SAN infrastructure. The same kind of problems you have in scaling, in adding resources, utilization of ports, those problems were solved in the fiber channel SAN world 10 years ago. What we have done at Brocade is ported all that 17 years of hard labor onto our Ethernet platform. So you now have the same kind of scale, ease of use capabilities on our Ethernet platform. And so we're providing that transition. We're providing transition to say, you know, NAS has grown up. NAS is not just disparate you know, storage network hanging off IP. Now people are you know, doing scale out NAS putting, you know, enabling people to, to share the NAS infrastructure. Same thing with the SSD guys. The SSD yeah, guys are initially plugging you. cards in the back of PCs and now they're creating SSD appliances that look like a SAN. <laughs> <laughs> and guess who knows more about getting storage to hum than anybody else in the world? It's Brocade. And so yeah. we're leveraging all our expertise from the fiber channel side into the SAN, into yeah. the SSD world. So, you know, we are the storage experts. The, wor the, world, could, kind of the world couldn't have spun in a better better direction for Brocade. We've been covering Brocade for four years now on theCUBE, and they've been on big big partner in supporting us, so thanks to Brocade, and I know you're now new, I want to make sure you yeah. knew that you guys have been um, some underwriting support for us. We really appreciate that, and it allows us to do our mission of theCUBE. Um, but I don't want to spoil my question by asking the following. Obviously, you're a new hire, yeah. uh, and you're the chief executive. So you had to do your own due diligence. They come, yeah. they come knocking on the door and you say, hey, Brocade, you know, looking for yeah. CEO, and, and you have to do your due diligence yeah. as well as they do theirs. So mm -hmm. what did you look at Brocade? You, you must have paused and said, whoa, whoa, okay. Opportunity, recognition kicks in. Okay, I'll, I'm, willing to, I'm willing to look at a new opportunity. And what got you hooked on Brocade? What made Technology. you go? Technology, I'm an engineer. And so there's nothing that moves my dial better than technology. There, yeah. There's no doubt in my mind that we have superior technology here. And, and I had the luxury of, you know, my last company was bought and I had some time you know, on my hands. Someone actually asked me to look at fabrics. And I was chief operating officer for Juniper Networks. And so I was asked to look at the Juniper fabric because they're looking to make an acquisition. And we looked at a Juniper fabric and it was, you know, boy, this is a complicated thing. You know, to be able to scale it out and figure out how this thing works. And so there's a bunch of us who say, well, let's look at all the fabrics. So we looked at the, the HP fabric and we looked at the, the um, Cisco fabric, and then we look at the brocade fabric glass, just for the hell of it. Yeah. Guess what, it was the best fabric available. I wasn't even offered the role as yet. Yeah. This was just people reaching out to me, knowing I'm a networking gearhead, that I know networking space, yeah. and I'm familiar with Juniper. You get called in like an and EIR for yeah. VCE or whatever, <laughs> yeah. and it was like, you know, here we go, this is the best fabric in the market. Why doesn't people know about this? So, I knew the fabric was rock solid. I knew that we had, you know, a significant share of the fiber channel, best of breed fiber channel products, best reliability there. And I also knew fiber channel wasn't dead because I'd seen customers who rushed from fiber channel over to the NAS side and some of them were coming yeah. back to fiber channel. And so there's no doubt in my mind that going forward 20 years from now, there'll be fiber yeah. channel, there'll be NAS, there'll be SSD. You know, we were, we've been talking about this since Oracle Open World three years ago, Dave and mm -hmm. I, and, and you know, I had, because we, you know, we were talking, those QLogic guys were like, hey, this fiber channel thing's interesting, and what's interesting was is that what they were using it for in the past is not what they're going to be using it for in the future, right. with Flash, with all these advancements. Yep. So, what do you see as the future? We were just right. saying on the cube, cube earlier that with Flash is the undiscovers coming, the new yep. architectures. What do you see as a, as a tech geek, now CEO, mm -hmm. about the future? I mean, what are those new, yet to be created, creative engineering solutions? Obviously, operating system like Mindset, yeah. software's a key part of the value proposition. You know, I think there's see? a bit of trying to schedule an invention here. <laughs> so, <laughs> but what, we, what we do know for certain is what I said earlier. There will be SSDs, there will be, there will be um, scale up NAS, there will be fiber channel. And you're exactly right. The SSD guys, as they create appliances, what do they do? They put a fiber channel connection on there. That's not what fiber channel was originally meant to do. The, the, so you're finding people realizing that low latency that fiber channel provides really has a value add that is distinct. So you will see an architecture where you'll have multiple times of storage and you'll see Brocade be the preeminent provider connectivity to that storage. And you're going to see a software defined layer that will have virtual appliances. You'll have virtual load balances, virtual routers, virtual switches, virtual firewalls. I mean, our virtual router was tested by Network World independently two weeks ago, and we're 10 times faster than Cisco virtual router at the same price point. 
you're going to see yeah. more and more of that because you're going to see more and more people move to the virtual environment and being able to, to load on these virtual machines, virtual appliances, so you walk into a data center, instead of having these standalone devices that you plug into the wall, firewalls, load balancer switches, they're going to be software apps running on top of a control plan. You need IOPS and you need latency. That's right. That's the key thing we're hearing. Yep. So, so like, what are your goals as CEO? You mentioned that you're focused, but at the same time, you know, you're sure you want to grow. Uh, is it TAM expansion? Is it uh, you know, partnerships? Can you talk about sort of the growth strategy and, and where well, you want to take the company and your personal goals? Well, the first thing from a personal standpoint, you're going to see us be recognized as the number one in customer satisfaction. In, in customer advocacy, we're going to be the number one network equipment provider in the marketplace. We're going to be doubling down hard. Right now our numbers are really very good. We're going to be exceptional in that space. Every one of our customers that we have, and we have, you know, we're talking about, we have 50,000 joint customers today with EMC. We have the who's who off the customer list in the world today. Right. If all we did, and I told my team this many times, if all we do is satisfy those customers, provide them with their next generation of product that, that they require, will be wildly successful. If I never win one more customer, if all I did was keep the customers I have happy today, we will rock the world. And we're going to do that. So number one thing you'll see from us is focus on customer sat, customer advocacy, and then continuing our, our um, delivery of best of breed solutions. We're going to narrow that focus into the data center, narrow that focus to ensure that we are you know, providing best of breed default products for storage connectivity, whatever kind of storage connectivity you need. And um, you'll see that reflect in the customer share wallet that we get. Today we're predominantly in the fiber channel side of most of our customers. You'll see us start to get more of their IP um, spent. Excellent, so um, what are the things that observers should watch on that progress then? So you just laid out kind of the high level strategy. Mm -hmm. What should we observe? You're only 100 days in, but so what are the kinds of things that we should, we should, we should <coughs> be watching that, that we can measure as outsiders yeah. or you know, that you'll share on earnings calls and uh, things like that? Uh, you know, two months ago we had 1,000 customers on our Ethernet fabric. Right now we have 1,100 customers on the Ethernet fabric. We have over 250,000 ports shipped on our Ethernet fabric. You should measure and watch us continue to grow in the Ethernet fabric space and capture margin and mind in Ethernet fabric space. We'll be one of the watchwords you should see. You should see us continue to be part of the steering force behind SDN. Um, David Meyer and our team right now heads a technical committee for um, Daylight, which is the, 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 the open solution set around sure, the control yeah. plane. You can, you can continue to see us make progress here and be a dominant player in the SDN space because quite frankly we have you know, the, the least to lose and most to gain as you move towards the software-defined networking space. Our, right. our Ethernet fabric solution is purpose-built for this world. You can buy Ethernet fabric solution today knowing that you are future-proofed into the SDN space. We already have the virtual appliances that you need. And you'll see more virtual appliances coming from us either from people we partner with or we deliver directly, whether it's our virtual router, our virtual um, firewall capability, and you know, look for virtual load balance capability, you'll see us build out that stack that is the stack of the future. That op open, you, used, you know, we talk a lot about open, and op open just is e the changes, right? The definition of open changes. It used to be Unix was open, right. and now it's like the IBM mainframe's yeah. more open because it runs Linux, but yeah. so, so that notion of open seems to be becoming increasingly a competitive advantage. You see the open stack and, and open source. So how do you sort of look at open? How do you define it? How do you, maybe not a pedantic definition, but in yep. general terms, and, and how do you leverage it? So there will be, to your point, multiple proprietary open solutions <laughs> that stick at that stack layer. <laughs> as much as we all dream of one, right? There'll be multiple versions of that. We have to ensure that our platforms are manageable, are provisionable, are, are um, flexible around these solutions. Be, in most markets, there'll be two or three that will emerge, and we're going to make sure that we have the best infrastructure to play with this open control plan. Well, we're at Lloyd Carney, the new CEO of Brocade. Um, my final question for you is we had a, a technology day prior to you coming on board uh, in September, and one of the comments we mentioned was the SDN was really a a game changer, because what happened was, you know, everyone says skate to where the puck's going to be, it's Silicon Valley kind of phrase. You guys were standing there and the puck just came to you, it's called SDM, <laughs> right? So with the fabrics that you had mentioned. So, so I want to get your final, final answer to, to talk about where are you guys going to take it? Obviously that's a good thing, you yeah. talk about the fabric. What, what's next, where are you going to take this? You're going to see us on the, um, 
SDN space, ensure that we have the best underlying infrastructure to support the VMware initiative around NICERA. Um, we're working closely with that team right now. Um, we're working also with the, the Daylight Open Forum, which is, is a competing solution to the NICERA team, but you know, as a company, uh, you know, $2.3 billion company in the space, we have to, to cover both our bets. And even all the major players are doing the same thing. Yeah. You look at the, the Daylight Forum, it, it's everybody's in there, right? Yeah, VMware IBM themselves are in there, in there. IBM's in there. there. <laughs> we're all in there, right? Yeah. So we're going to make sure that around those two axes that we have the best hardware infrastructure and software infrastructure to complement that play. So we're not, we're absolutely going to be leaders in the SDN space. We're going to ensure that our customers realize the value, because the value to them is immense. You know, all of a sudden, instead of having all these disparate devices, from a hardware standpoint, most of your infrastructure is run on Intel-based, AMD-based x86 platforms. Huge benefit to our customers from a cost standpoint, and we can enable the customers to realize an advantage. Well, the data center is now the operating system. We've been hearing that theme. The APIs, the data center will turn into an API, as, we, as Dave Vellante was mentioning earlier. Obviously, fiber channels are a big part of that, connecting the fabrics together. Uh, Lloyd Carney, congratulations as CEO. We'll be watching and we'll be following your moves and uh, thanks for coming inside theCUBE. No, thanks for taking the time. Okay, we'll be right Great. back with our next guest after the short break. This is theCUBE at EMC World, day one of three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back after this short break.